Go Seth! Go Seth! Let's go! Onto the plane and into the studio. We're back. Let's do this. All right, everyone. The 2019 New York City Marathon is officially in the books. And yes, this book by Liz Robbins, the title does not lie. A race like no other. It truly was a race like no other. I can't even. So I did not sleep on the plane ride here. If I look a little tired, a little haggard, that is why. I probably should have slept the four hour plane ride back to Denver, but instead I couldn't sleep. I tried because I was thinking and processing what I experienced yesterday in the five boroughs of New York. And on that note, uh, New York is unlike any other race that I've done. One of the very uh, practical reasons why and so what I'm about to share, and you know how I can talk for a long time here in the studio, so I'm gonna try and, I have a lot of thoughts to share, but I'm gonna try and keep it concise. But one of the reasons New York is, is um, so I wanna give you a lot of insights, but one of the reasons New York is uh, unique is because it's point to point. And so you get to see more neighborhoods, more all five boroughs, more culture along the, the 26.2 miles, more, uh, uh, more food, like smelling the food in the neighborhoods that's being cooked on, on the sidewalks. You get to hear the languages being spoken. Uh, you get to hear the different instruments being played. You get to hear the silence of the Orthodox Jewish, Jewish neighborhood. Um, you get to experience the five bridges. So it really, really, not just from a, it's hard, you gotta, you know, it's, it's a hilly marathon course. Um, uh, there's a, yeah, not from the running perspective, just the fact that you go through the five boroughs. So just want to point that out at the beginning. Unbelievable. Just, it really was unique. And um, I hope to be back. Just putting that out there right now. I hope to be back someday. Okay, diving in. I'm going to go from start to finish. Let's break this down again, trying to bring you some insights into what I experienced and what I hope you get, uh, were able to experience yesterday in the vlog when I basically collected and again a shout out to i think 50 people around there email emailed me clips from their phones from their gopros uh of filming along the way that vlog does not happen without demore global running uniting on the streets of new york so thank you for taking the time for putting in the energy to get out on the streets to keep your eyes up huh keep your eyes up to look for me because you you know i guess you didn't know exactly when i was going to get to those points so it was a big deal to receive. It was, I don't know what the exact number, number was, but it was around 50 different video clips from different people. So thank you. And I'm going to use them again in this vlog right now. Um, so let's dive in first to the Blue Corral, very organized at the base of the Verrazano Bridge. Um, I found my corral very easily. The UPS truck, uh, thank you UPS for the bag drop. Uh, that was perfect. And uh, the weather was solid yesterday, but a little breezy, okay? Going through Brooklyn especially, just a little breezy. Um, I'll get more into that in a minute. And then uh, after the corral, after you're collected there, after you've donated the clothes to the Goodwill bins, unbelievable. I'm talking, I think, well, yeah, I'm going to say it, millions and millions of dollars of pretty nice running gear just being tossed in these bins because you're not going to run with it. For 26 miles so what's cool is that they take all that clothing that's tossed on the ground or tossed in these bins they wash every single piece of clothing and then it gets put back out into the world for people to use that uh who knows maybe they're getting into running somewhere in the greater new york city area so i think that's amazing um so we leave the corral and then you head toward the starting line um you're going through the crowd you know the dj kicks it up and it uh, it gets loud i so here's what's crazy and this is what a lot of people people are confused about the start from yesterday. You saw the footage. It got a little crazy. It got a little crazy on the Verrazano Bridge. So I get there, and I'm about 
five or six people back in my corral, meaning I'm not right at the front, but I'm about five or six people back. And then five minutes to go before the gun goes off, all of a sudden, these people start streaming in from the side and I see them coming in and I'm like, are they running? And who are they? And are they gonna be running 520 a mile? And so I don't, okay, I, <laughs> so here's the deal. People are asking in the comments from yesterday, Seth, why were you not in the front? Why were you tripping over people at the beginning? Why were you, you know, elbowing people to get up the Verrazano Bridge? Well, I did not, when I, when I received my registration, I submitted my, my projected finish time, but I, I, I submitted that before Amsterdam. I did not have a road marathon time to submit, so I could not gain entry into the sub-elite category. Who knows, maybe 223 from Amsterdam would have, no, it would not have gotten me into the elite. So there's the, there's the elite, and then there's the sub-elite category, and then there's the blue corral, and that's where I was. But then, five minutes to go, these people stream into the side, and I don't know if they, I don't know if they, I don't know who they were, but there was quite a few of them. If it was connected to Foot Locker, um, if it was connected to fundraising and charities, it got ugly. It got ugly. I don't know what else to say. The gun goes off. I take off. Everyone, it on, and honestly, almost got dangerous because you cross the starting mat. I, it took me maybe like seven seconds to get to the starting mat before my, my time officially started. And I took off at, you know, whatever, 520 a mile. And I'm elbowing and I'm, I'm juking and ducking and diving. And so anyway, that's what happened at the start. And we survived. But uh, then we passed this gentleman, right? What did I type in yesterday's vlog? Um, uh, no excuses. Work hard. Believe. Okay? That gentleman was inspiring. So we pass him going up the Verrazano Bridge. And then we start chit-chatting around uh, with Jordan and the, three mus the third musketeer from Amsterdam. Sorry, I'm blanking your name right now. But uh, basically, we start talking, okay, who wants to run 520s? So that was pretty neat. I wish we would have had a bigger group, honestly, because there were some other guys ahead of us that, and this is at the top of the Verrazano Bridge, about mile one, where we're kind of collecting together. So it was neat. We were working together, this gentleman, Jordan, who you're going to see a lot of, and uh, where we start clipping them off together, about a group of four of us, maybe five of us. But then at about mile three or four, it's just Jordan and I going through Brooklyn, going through Brooklyn, trying to relax, um, trying not to go out in 106.53, um, Brooklyn is hilly, okay? So for the future, if you're thinking of running, uh, if you're thinking of running this marathon, like Brooklyn is rolling. It's never really completely flat. And it's not horrible hills, but you know, it's taking a toll on your legs. So it's definitely smart to save a little bit of energy in those first, well, frankly, those first 11, 12 miles. Um, so we're rolling, Jordan and I are rolling. And real quick note is that it was, I think Brooklyn was the loudest neighborhood uh, Manhattan was loud as well on First Avenue, but Brooklyn, the streets are narrower, so the noise is that much louder. So shout out to Brooklyn. I think you you take the uh, the cake for the loudest uh, uh, borough, and then um, and then we're cruising. But then we get to the Orthodox Jewish neighborhood, and it was silent for about a mile and a half, maybe two miles. And honestly, it was really nice because it was so yeah, loud. Seth, you get go, your energy going, and you get a little maybe too excited, and so you got to chill out. So we go through the uh, the Orthodox Jewish neighborhood. We're cruising, and then um, we we get we're get, starting to get close to the halfway point, the half marathon mark, uh, the Pulaski Bridge. If I'm saying it right, and honestly, everyone, the Verrazano Bridge. Don't worry about it. It's not steep. It's kind of long, but it's not that steep. You have all your energy it's fine. You're going to get up that no problem. The Pulaski Bridge, the halfway point going from Brooklyn over to Queens, that was hard. It was, it was steeper than I expected. And I think it was maybe, now it wasn't that long, but it was just kind of steep. And there was no, no one cheering around. Um, it was a little breezy on the bridge because there was no buildings. It was very strange. It's kind of like no man's land. So I did, and I had to ask myself, okay, because my legs at about the halfway point, I had to make a decision. Like, this is either going to get a little ugly today or we're going to have to pick it up and go for it because I was feeling okay, but I wasn't feeling perfect. I think just the remnants of Amsterdam starting to kick in. So Jordan and I are still together. We're cranking. Here's a, probably one of the greatest clips from the day from a gentleman yelling about butter. You better believe it. Let's go, Seth! Let's go, Seth! Seth! 
Justin, get some butter, kid. Get some butter. And then after that, we keep cranking it. We're coming up on mile 14 and the Queensboro Bridge, which goes from Queens over to Manhattan. And I loved it. Queensboro Bridge, the third bridge. Yeah, third bridge, amazing. It's, it's, so it's, you're enclosed. You're actually on the lower level. It's kind of dark. It's quieter. And you just cruise it. I cranked it. And uh, so, uh, this is where Jordan and I actually started to separate. Jordan and I worked together for a long time. Shout out to Jordan. I can tell we're going to race again someday, Jordan. But that's where uh, I started to, you know, just going uphill. I started to crank, 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 and then the downhill. And then it pops you out onto First Avenue, baby. And that's where I got, I just, I can't help myself. Like, I, I think I have so much, I want to, I want, I want people to, uh, understand the gift of running and that yes maybe we're not playing in an NBA arena or an NFL stadium but the streets of New York it can be exciting too for a running event so uh, Jordan kind of got used to it but probably like maybe three or four times especially in Brooklyn but I just kind of do this it's like come on crowds like you're here cheering but can we hear you and so I just like like let's do this like we're out here in New York they shut down the city for us. Let's show them. Let's let's give it to the city. Like show them a show so that they can uh, have stories to share. Anyway, I just get excited as you can tell. So anyway, we turn onto First Avenue. We're cruising down First Avenue. Love First Avenue. Really fun. Feeling really good. Um, I better pull up some splits real quick. So from First Avenue, it looks like I went like 519. This is mile 16. Mile 17, 528. Mile 18, 501. See, I was feeling okay. Uh, mile 19, 513, mile 20, 518, mile 21, 517. So the goal was five, you know, 520 pace, preferably five. So we, okay, I should also mention we came through the halfway point a little slow, a little slower than I had hoped. It was 111, oh boy, I think it was 111.23. So a little slower than I had hoped. Listen, I was trying to pace it well. Uh, it's like, you know, you, you, you don't want to look at your watch too much. Plus, like the rolling hills of Brooklyn, like the, the pacing was so anyway, um, it was not perfect pacing. I will admit that the first, but I did not go. I don't think I went out too fast, so I'm proud of that. Uh, but then, OK, mile 22, 523, 523, 534. Um, so anyway, I was holding pretty good paces. So after First Avenue, we jump over into the Bronx. And people have said like the Bronx is kind of a quieter neighborhood. This is at about, uh, is it mile, I have the map here. I think it's about mile 20-ish. Around mile, yeah, about mile 20-ish, you hop in there. And it was loud. I would say it was not quiet at all. Um, now, maybe not huge crowd sizes because you don't go too far into the Bronx, but it was perfect. Like, I was very impressed with the crowds in the Bronx, so thanks for coming out. And then, uh, and then you jump back into Manhattan onto 5th. Avenue, Fifth Avenue. So let me just make sure I'm not missing anything through these first four boroughs. Um, yeah, I lost my wingman, Jordan, at about mile fifth. That's a note I wrote down here. Um, let's see, the splits, First Avenue, Bronx, and then into Fifth Avenue. So, okay, I still had dreams at mile 16 that I could maybe negative split in a big way and hit 219. Like that's, you know, if I show up for a race, I'm not going to sit back. I'm not gonna, It's not in my blood to do that. And uh, so I'm, I'm happy with the 111 first half. I wish it would have been faster. I, I'll, I'll admit it. I wish it would have been like 110, 15, 110, 20. Oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So at mile 16 on the downside of the Queensboro, I just said, okay, let's, let, let, we, didn't, we didn't get dressed up for nothing. Eh? So I got, it's like, let's rock and roll. So that's what I did. Cruising down first and then back into Manhattan onto 5th. And you get into onto 5th Avenue. And the bridges, just so you know, you cross two more bridges, the Willis Avenue Bridge, and then, oh, I think it's the Madison Avenue Bridge, maybe, back into Manhattan. The Madison Avenue, nothing to worry about at all. The Willis Avenue was a little, I had a little bit of a climb, but nothing compared to Queensboro. So for those of you who are hopefully running New York in the future, uh, don't worry about it. Fifth Avenue, okay, coming down, mile 22, I'm still in it. Like, I'm still looking at my watch, like, mm. Four miles to go. It's going to be close. It's going to be tight. I, I was gunning for it. I just know it. Like my, my times were not bad. Uh, 523, 523, uh, and then a 534 at mile 24. But then, okay, I should have done, okay, tip of the day. 
I would, if you have the time, I would recommend going to Fifth Avenue, going up that hill before you take a right into Central Park and just realize that here I am running up the hill. Shout out to this gentleman, I don't even know his name, who ran alongside me with a GoPro. You helped me get up that hill, by the way. And um, this hill was long. It was not crazy steep, but I did not expect it. And it kind of zapped me. Um, my time dropped back to about a 6.05, it looks like. And um, so, I, if I'm re, yeah, so about 6.05, so it was hard. And then at the top of the hill, you still have, oh man, what is it? Is it two miles to go approximately? About two miles to go. And that I just wasn't ready for Fifth Avenue. So I would, if you have time, study the Fifth Avenue hill. And Jordan and I talked about Fifth Avenue after the race, once we crossed the finish line. Um, and then Central Park, not a, not a cakewalk. In fact, it was ridiculously hard. Uh, quite a bit of downhill, which is hard on the quads at the end of the race. And then you, you get to the bottom of the downhill and you make a hard right at the bottom of Central Park. And it's a slow, steady uphill. And I was toast. And that way, that's actually a mile to go exactly, right when you make that turn, basically. And I had nothing left. Let me just make sure it's a mile to go right there. Yeah, a little bit, okay, a little before that turn. Had nothing left. I, you know, and that's where you're just thinking about your, thinking about my mom, looking at my wrist and just like offering the pain up for her and just pushing through, pumping the, I had, like, you know, when you, it, it kind of felt like the last four to four miles of Amsterdam, frankly. Like it, it was uh, the last mile. I think it, I don't know what my, this is, I don't, the split, I don't know if this, this one is actually accurate. It felt closer to like seven minute pace. Like I really dropped off at the end there. So anyway and then you cruise into the finish it's amazing huge crowds um the, the elites are still kind of hanging around so that was neat to see some of them i didn't see kipchoge i was kind of looking for him there at the end but frankly i didn't have much energy cross crossing the finish line to uh to process much and uh and then you get to so you cross the finish line just so you know then you get to walk a mile out of the um out of the park and that's an interesting experience as well because your legs are are burning and barking at you so i finished in two hours 24 minutes and one seconds about crazy enough about 20 seconds ish 25 seconds slower than amsterdam and obviously much hillier course so i'm just gonna say it now i was gonna maybe not say this now i think if my pacing of new york would have been applied to amsterdam i I think I would have gotten the 219. I really do. Not the exact pacing, but just like obviously not like holding back way more in Amsterdam. The first like not, like go out in 109.50 or 110 flat and then come back. I think things would. But you know, it's water under the bridge. That's why you go and race. You uh, you go out to figure out what you can muster and to learn and to fail. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it and you, and you come back. And you come back and so that's what i did yesterday hopefully in new york um and i think somebody tweeted to me i was like maybe the 13th american so that's kind of cool 36th overall so i carried you guys with me the whole way absolutely like i was thinking of you and oh my goodness just listening to the cheering so thank you again for the support for that's my analysis i could say so so much more about the day about the race um overall okay i will just say i just thought of this I had five Morton gels, okay? So throughout the race, I carried six. I didn't eat the last one, basically because I was cranking and I, I, I just didn't wanna, I, I didn't really I had the energy to pull it out and tear it. I, so anyway, I, I, uh, maybe I should have had that last one, but I had five and then water at the aid stations was perfect. Way better than Amsterdam, grabbing the bottles. Um, now I splashed the water all over myself, but there are so many aid stations I just took little sips at not every aid station, probably 80% of them. And um, pinching the cup at 520 a mile was okay, or 525 or whatever the mile was. Um, grabbed it, pinched it, put it back, not a ton. In fact, at one point I said, okay, I, gotta, I don't, I don't want to drink too much water. One of the times I accidentally get, grabbed one of the Gatorades. It was For me, it was too sweet. I had to spit it out and it was just too much for me. So I just stuck to water and the Morton gels and it sat pretty well the whole way. Uh, maybe the, like a little bit the last mile in my stomach, but it wasn't bad. Uh, and then the shoes. I will, okay, just mention real quick, the 4% versus the next percent. Um, the next percent, my feet felt better, a lot better at the end. Like my feet, I didn't really even think about my feet at all until mile 23 in New York, 
Whereas it was definitely like 18 or 17 in, in Amsterdam, probably because I was going faster, but um, I must say, okay, the next percent was pretty, it was nice. And okay, another tip of the day, I know I'm putting a lot out there. The next percent upper scrunches a lot for me. So uh, I put the shoes on in the motel and then I walked, I did not tie the shoes. And then I walked around the, uh, the village at the Verrazano Bridge, going to my corral and the vapor weave seemed to kind of settle onto my foot, like the tongue and everything. And when I laced it up, it really was nice. So anyway, maybe you don't lace your shoes up in the motel, kind of walk around a little bit in the shoes just to, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it, but just to let the shoes kind of figure out how they're going to fit and conform onto your foot, if that makes sense. I know it's going into a lot of detail there, but I was happy, very, very happy with the next percent choice for the Big Apple, for the Big Apple. All right, everyone. Okay, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Here is the medal. Absolutely epic, just an epic medal. And I think I, I didn't get it done, but I, I, I think I will get it engraved on the back. I got the bib number 1008. You know how I will write my time on there. And I will just say, um, this is an audio book as well. Uh, but I, I would strongly recommend reading this book before you run New York. I learned so much. It is down below from Amazon if you want to pick it up there, but you can do audio book. You can pick it up probably at a Barnes and Noble as well or a local bookshop as well. So that is it, folks. Um, I could, again, I'm going to stop. Oh my gosh. It was amazing. And I'm just humbled by you. Humbled by you. Question of the day. Oh boy. Oh boy. Have you begun to put together your 2020 racing schedule? Huh? Have you begun? All right. Uh, now that New York is in the, in the rear view mirror, you better believe I'm starting to make some decisions. And so I'm going to share those with you this week, not right now, this week, some, some, some uh, percolation that's happening in the racing department for myself. So I'll be excited to read, like, are you getting ready for Boston? Are you getting ready for New York next, like, who knows? Maybe you're going to get into New York next fall. I guess you wouldn't know yet, but maybe Berlin or anything as far as marathons, or maybe you're doing Peachtree or the Boulder Boulder, which is a 10K here, or maybe um, some half marathons or a hundred mile race, right? I actually rode alongside a gentleman in the subway who uh, he just completed the Leadville 100 this year and he did New York as well. So that was impressive. But um, all right, I'm going to cut it there, cut it there. I hope that helps paint the picture a little bit more as to what was happening on the course, maybe some tips and tricks for if you ever get into New York. I hope you do. Keep applying, keep fundraising. If you can do it through charity, that's one way to get in. And um, I, think I, I, I think I'll be back in New York. So maybe we'll do another group run in Central Park next year. You better believe it. Butter my bread, butter my bread. All right, everyone, we're tossing it back tonight to two vlogs. We're going to go back to the uh, Amsterdam Marathon race analysis from two weeks ago. And then also just from a couple days ago, the group run in Central Park, which was absolutely epic. That'll be on the left and Amsterdam on the right. All right, here we go. See goody. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.